Hey, what's up you guys? It's Travis. Before I begin this story, I just want to tell you guys that it's from my book, 10 Steps to Stop Being a Crazy Girl, which is still unpublished. So if you happen to be a publisher or a book agent watching this video right now, feel free to contact me at the links in the description section below. This is a very crazy story that happened to me with someone that you guys probably know, but basically my celebrity ex-boyfriend beat me during sex. Before I begin that story, however, I just wanna tell you guys that this story does have some form of abuse in it. So if that is a trigger for you, then you can please click away from this video at this time because I don't mean to offend. This is just my story. This is how I'm telling it. So let's begin. So this story takes place a long time ago when I was still modeling and I said before in some of my videos that I had a lot of breakdowns while I was modeling and this was during one of those breakdowns. I had left New York to go back to Colorado to stay with my grandparents to go through therapy and take a lot of medication to try and make me better because I was losing my mind. Not only was the modeling industry making me lose my mind but there was this other thing that was happening that may seem absolutely crazy but I'm just gonna tell you guys straight up exactly what it was. I believed that I could manifest anything that I wanted. This kind of goes along with The Secret, that book The Secret where you can basically manifest whatever you want. But it was happening with me and it was happening all the time. And I still don't fully understand exactly what happened during that period of my life because I've since lost that ability. Part of what was making me crazy was that I was able to manifest these things that I wanted but I still wasn't happy making them happen so I wasn't sure why I was so unhappy all the time. Now of course when I told the therapist about this she looked at me like I was crazy. She didn't really believe in that. She was a very practical person. But I told her I was able to manifest lots of things in my life that you couldn't predict that you would be able to get and I would get it. The therapist of course didn't believe me at all so she put it to the test. Okay Travis, if you can manifest anything you want, I want you to manifest something for me for the next time that I see you. The thing with me manifesting those things is that I really needed to want it, and it had to be a genuine want. I couldn't just pick anything. It was something that was inside me, something that was inside that was already there that I would go out and get. So the want couldn't be made up. I couldn't say I want a million dollars and just get a million dollars. There had to be a deep, very specific want that I could go out there and make happen. And it would be so odd, like for example, there was a scholarship that I wasn't even eligible for. I didn't fit the requirements for it. But I saw that scholarship and something in me said, you're gonna get this scholarship. And so I applied for it, even though my counselor was like, that's pointless, it's a waste of time. And two months later, I received that scholarship. And this happened many other different times in my life. So the therapist wanted to put it to the test. She said, Travis, manifest something for me by the time we see each other tomorrow. I was like, well, I can't manifest things like whenever I want. It just happens whenever it's supposed to happen. And she goes, well, just try. And so I was like, well, what am I supposed to manifest? And she goes, you pick. I just want to know what you can manifest. I want to see your power in action. I looked over and on the coffee table I saw a picture of a very famous celebrity on the cover of this magazine. I'm not going to say which magazine it was. And I saw him over there and I said, I'm going to go on a date with the person on the front of that magazine. She looks over at the magazine and she's already skeptical. I can see it all over her face. And she goes, perfect. Let me know how it works out. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. So I go home that night. I forget about it for a while because I just felt like it was a challenge. I just felt like she was taunting me and I didn't really take it that seriously because it wasn't a big deal to me. Manifesting wasn't my concern at the time. I was losing my mind. I just needed help however I needed to get it. So I was sitting there at my grandparents' house. We were watching TV that night and that same celebrity came on TV. And when I saw him, it reminded me of what I said I was going to do for the therapist. So right away, I stood up. I walked from my grandparents' living room and I go to their computer room I pull up Google, I type in the celebrity's name and email address, and the first search that it pulled up was an email address that looked like it was for him. So I copied and pasted his email address in there, and I wrote something very simple like, Hi there, my name is Travis Bryant. I am a model that works in New York City, but I'm currently in Colorado taking a break for right now. I'm a big fan of your work. I would love to meet up with you for dinner if you're up for it. Here's my phone number. Please give me a call. Looking forward to hearing from you, Travis Bryant. So I turned off my grandparents' computer. I went to bed, and I didn't think about it again. The next day when I was in therapy, she brought it up again. So she brings it up, and she goes, Did you manifest the guy that you're going to go on a date with? And she was being a little bit condescending. And I said, well, no, I don't know if that's exactly how it works. It kind of happens on its own time. And she goes, okay, Travis, I just want to talk to you right now. You can't manifest things. That's not something that's really healthy for your mind. It creates this grandiose superhero complex that could lead to being bipolar. And as she said that, my phone rings. My phone rings and I pull it out and I look and it's a New York number. Now I was modeling in New York so it made sense for a New York number to be calling me. So I just muted my phone and I put it back down and I let her continue. You can't manifest things. We really need to work on your grasp with reality because thinking that you can manifest things that are impossible to achieve. Right then, again, my phone starts to ring. 
And she goes, do you just want to take that? And I said, no, I'm so sorry. Sorry, go on, what were you saying? Travis, this is for your own well-being. It would be nice if we can manifest anything we wanted, but that's not reality. So the sooner you stop believing that you can manifest something that can't happen, the sooner you're going to be... I'm so sorry. And she's like, why don't you just take it? And I said, no, 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 I'm sorry. And as I did that, I looked down and I saw that there was a voicemail. And so I said, I'm so sorry. I don't know if this is for a job in New York City. So I was like, can I listen to this voicemail right now? And she goes, sure, go ahead, it's your time. I take out my phone, I press play, and the message starts. Travis, this is I'm calling you because you sent me an email asking me to call you. So here it is, call me back. Both of our mouths just dropped. The woman just looks down at my phone and then back down to her notebook and up to me and she's like, I think we're good today. I'm absolutely shocked because although I knew that I had that whole manifesting thing going on, I couldn't believe it actually worked for something like that because I wanted so badly to prove her wrong so I manifested it through this photo of the celebrity who then calls me right there in her office and says that he wants to go on a date with me. Oh god, I was like freaking out. I didn't even know for sure if he was gay, so I was just like, holy shit. Oh my god, like why is he calling me? So of course I wait till later that night and I call him back and I am shaking. I am so nervous to speak to him on the phone. And he answers and he sounds just like he does on TV. And I'm just like, hi, it's Travis. And he goes, I know. How are you? We're talking on the phone for a little bit and one thing I noticed about him is he's very different than how he is in the media. He's very quiet, he's very reserved, and he always keeps the conversation on me. So we have that first phone call that night and we talk for about an hour just like getting to know each other a little bit. I was so nervous but he made me feel very comfortable and then we hung up but I didn't have very high hopes for him so I figured that would be the last time I hear from him ever again. Well the next night I got a phone call from him again and the next night and the next night and the next night and the next. He kept calling me every day for the next two months while I was back home and we started building some foundation for a relationship. Cut to January. I finally end up going back to New York because I have a modeling job out there so I'm not completely mentally well quite yet but it's time to go back to work so I'm doing my best. The night that I get into New York we're supposed to grab dinner that night and he has to work late because of his job and what he does and so he doesn't get off to like 11.30. So he says well if you want you can come over and hang out at my place but I have to leave in the morning to fly somewhere for shooting something else that he was doing. So I go over to his place and I knock on his door, it's in the Upper West Side. <laughs> And when he opens the door, I am frozen because he's standing right there in front of me. Like the most famous person I've ever met is standing there in front of me and he's inviting me into his house. So we go upstairs, we sit down on the couch, we're chatting for a while like we did for the last couple of months. And then finally he leans in and kisses me. Unlike other kisses that I've had, I wasn't in the moment. I wasn't thinking about how great that kiss was and how turned on I was. I was thinking, holy shit, I'm kissing <laughs> So finally one thing leads to the next and we are in his bedroom. We are on his bed and he pulls off my shirt and I pull off his shirt. We're making out, it's super hot, it's super sensual and I'm really getting into it. And then finally, he leans up out of nowhere and boom, hits me right in the chest. What the f Before I even have a chance to react to that, he leans back down and starts kissing me some more. Did I just imagine that? Did he just punch me in the chest or did I just make that up because he's kissing me now? So I just kind of brushed it off and I keep going with the flow of whatever's happening right then. We're making out, we're kissing some more, it's getting super hot and heavy, our pants are coming off, and then suddenly he leans up again and punches me in the chest a second time. Well, listen here, motherfucker, you don't know where I'm from either. But before I can even say that, he lunges down at me and starts choking me. He is strangling me in his grasp. He's squeezing so tight I literally can't breathe, I can't say anything. I'm just fighting for breath as I grab his hands trying to make him let go because I think this mother is trying to kill me. What started off as a hot, super sexy night with my celebrity crush, I'm thinking it's turning into a horror story because I'm thinking on page six tomorrow in the New York Times it's gonna say Travis Bryant, struggling, half-decent model, murdered by this famous person. It's gonna be my first time in the headlines and I'm gonna be dead. So I'm lying beneath him trying to get him to release his grip and I'm pulling, he's not letting go. So then finally I just buck him up and throw him on the other side of me because I'm stronger than him, thank God. And I pin his arms down, I put my knees over his arms, and I try and stop him, but then he starts laughing. This crazy mother 
likes it. And I'm sitting there like, what the hell is going on? So when I release him, because I'm not going to strangle him either, because I don't know how that's going to look on page six, he bucks me off of him again, rolls over, and starts punching me some more, and choking me, and scratching me, and doing all of that for the rest of the time that we have sex. Now, I'm young at this point. I don't really know about my sexuality quite yet, so I don't have the confidence to really draw that line or set the boundaries, so I just kind of let it happen the rest of the night until we're done having sex. After we're done, I leave. He kisses me and sends me on my way back to my friend's place that I was staying at. I go see my friends who were excited to hear about how the date went, and when I walk in the door, they just... <sighs> They thought that I was jumped. I had a busted lip, a broken vessel in my eye, a black eye over here, I had scratches all over my neck. It looked like I was actually jumped. And my friend, Kevin, was like, what the hell happened? I think I just had sex as I limp over to him on the couch to tell him about what happened. So it was kind of shocking and I didn't really feel super comfortable because it's not the sex that I normally am used to having. Sex is supposed to feel good and that didn't feel good at all. And I'd had rougher sex before, but that wasn't rough sex. It felt like I was being beat up. I kept seeing him for the next couple of months after that. He was so nice and so sweet and so caring and sensitive when we were talking when we weren't having sex. But when we did have sex, it was like he unleashed all of his fury out on me and beat the shit out of me. But I kept doing it with him for a few months after that and I kept feeling worse and worse and worse about myself and about my relationship with him because it didn't feel like genuine affection. It didn't feel like intimacy. I just felt like I was being hurt. And the time that I'm supposed to feel the most connected with you, I felt the least connected. And I felt really sad about that. It was really affecting me quite a bit. Over time, however, he started getting more and more sensual. He started not doing it so often. He started being nicer and being more sensual during sex. And it started feeling really good. And then finally, one night, he stopped it completely and we had the most connected, best sex we'd had the entire time that I had met him. It was the first time that I finally felt good after we did it. So I went home that night feeling very optimistic and I felt reinvigorated and more confident in that relationship. And I woke up the next morning to a phone call from him saying, I don't think we should see each other anymore. I was a little taken aback because to me it seemed like we were in the best position we'd been in since we'd met. And he just gave some excuses of why he didn't want to be with me anymore that were kind of bullshit. It was just the nice guy things to say, but it just felt like he didn't want to share the intimacy with me. It felt like he didn't want to fall for me, and by beating me up during sex, that kind of kept a distance, and he started letting that guard down, and when he did, he bounced. I was really sad about that because I really started falling for him, and it just sucked because he left. But at the same time, it was kind of good because being abused is not something that you should ever accept. And that's the takeaway that I want to give from this story for you guys, that you should never accept someone treating you like that. Because in hindsight, I wish I would have said something. I wish I would have drawn the line and said, that makes me uncomfortable, can you please stop? And if he didn't stop, then I should have left him. And maybe to him it was just rough sex, but to me it wasn't interpreted that way, and that's what mattered the most. Because although this story is crazy, and it was an interesting time in my life, the abusive part of that, I don't feel super great about. That's the only part of the story that I really regret. And so if someone's making you feel bad about yourself, physically, if they're hurting you, if they're hurting you with their words, then please don't accept that because you don't deserve that. That's all I have for this video, guys. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.